Hi there, welcome to a video tutorial on working with radicals. In this video, we're going to develop the skills necessary to work with expressions involving square roots. All right, so just a couple of definitions for you. Working with radicals, an entire radical, this is the term given to an expression that just involves a square root where the number under the square root is greater than zero. So for example, the square root of 45, we would call that an entire radical. Uh, we don't use that word entire too often, we just call it a radical. That's what an entire radical is. Okay, a mixed radical is an expression involving a square root that looks like this, where you've got some number times the square root of another number. Your a value is, is not one, otherwise if the a value was one, you would have an entire radical, and your b value has to be greater than zero. Okay, you can't take the square root of a negative number. All right, so this is what we call a mixed radical. As it turns out, this mixed radical is just another form of this entire radical. And that's what we're gonna do in this video lesson is sort of learn how to simplify entire radicals and make them into mixed radicals. This useful property here, if you're taking notes, I would write this one down. Okay, so what it says is the square root of some number times another number is equal to the square root of the first number times the square root of the second number. And we're gonna use that throughout this video. All right, so we can change entire radicals to mixed radicals by moving the largest perfect square from underneath the square root sign. So just a little bit of review about perfect squares. These are numbers that when square rooted, give you a nice whole number. So for instance, if you take the square root of any of these, you end up with two, three, four, five, etc. So if you just take two, three, four, five, and so on and square those numbers, you'll end up with a perfect square. What we're gonna do is just kind of go over the process for writing these, these entire radicals as mixed number radicals. The process involves taking the number underneath the square root sign and breaking it up into the product of two numbers. So what we're gonna to try to do is take this number and represent it in this way so that we can use our useful property. So you need to find two numbers that multiply to give you 45, one of which is a perfect square. So what I usually do is I start and I try to find the biggest perfect square possible. So obviously 25 won't work, 16 won't work. Nine, however, if I take 45 and I write it as a product of nine and five, that should work, right? Nine times five is 45. So then I can use my useful property here. I can take my nine times five product underneath the square root sign and I can break it up into the square root of nine times the square root of five. And from here, you can see why I wanted to pick a perfect square number. I can take nine, take the square root of it, and, and I get three. So I can write this as three times root five. Now sure enough, if you check on your calculator, for instance, the square root of 45, and three times the square root of five, those two values should be the same. So that's what we've done. We haven't changed anything. We've just rewritten our entire radical as a mixed radical. Part B here, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna to try to take this guy and break it up into a product of a perfect square and some other number. So taking a peek at 125, quickly you'll see that 25 will go into that number. So we're gonna write that as 25 times five. And remember we do that so that we can use our, our useful property. And from here, you can see that the square root of 25 is a nice number, five. We've got five times the square root of five. And sure enough, these two values are the same. So that's the process you're gonna use for any, any problem like this, where you're taking an entire radical and you're representing it as a mixed radical. You're just gonna take the number underneath, you're gonna break it up into the product of two numbers, one of which is a perfect square, this one happens to be 36. It's the greatest perfect square possible. You're just gonna use your useful property, simplify, and end up with a nice mixed number radical. And make sure that you pick the biggest possible perfect square, otherwise you're gonna have to do a little bit of extra work. Okay, so operations involving radicals. It's kind of nice for us to be able to work with expressions involving addition and subtraction and multiplication of radicals. Uh, so this is definitely a skill you're gonna develop and use throughout your studies in secondary math. Uh, so in order to add or subtract radicals, it's sort of like when you're adding or subtracting like terms where variables must be the same. So in this case, instead of talking about variables, we're talking about the number under the root. So your number under the root has to be the same. So for five times the square root of six, we're subtracting two times the square root of six. The square root of six would be your like radical. So we can just sort of subtract those like they are like terms. So we have five minus two and we just keep the root six. So we have three root six. That was a 
pretty straightforward one. We didn't have to do any work to you know change our, our radical to a mixed number radical. This example here, you can see I've got root three and root 27. These are not like roots, if you will. So we're gonna have to use our useful property to break this number here, this 27 up into the product of two numbers, one of which will be a perfect square. So we're gonna do that. Think about 27. You can, you can write that as nine times three. Nine is gonna be the biggest possible perfect square. And then we can just apply our useful property and we can change the square root of nine into three. Okay, now I, I've got four times three. I can multiply those two numbers to get 12. You can see now I've got like radicals and I can just simply add those two together. And I've got two root threes and I'm adding 12 root threes. I've got 14 root threes. All right, so we've added and subtracted radicals. Next thing we're gonna look at here is multiplying radicals. Okay, we're gonna do this, we're gonna use the distributed property. Okay, so the distributed property just says I can take this number here, multiply by this number, I'm, and then I'm also gonna take this number and multiply by this number. When we do that, we're gonna get two times three, which we know is six. We also have root three times root six. Now, what I've done here is I've used my useful property in reverse. So what I've done is I've said, well, I know that when I've got radicals, I can take the root of one number times the root of another number, and I can write that as the root of the product of the numbers. So that's what I've done here. I've taken root of three times the root of six, and, and I've written that as the root of three times six, okay, also known as the root of 18. Now, your instinct here is gonna be to stop. You're gonna say, okay, great, I've got a mixed number radical. But if you, if you think carefully here, this 18, we can actually break this up into a product of a perfect square and another number. Right, you can see I can write that as nine times two, nine being a perfect square. So I wanna take the, the square root of that perfect square and, and I end up with this situation where I have six times three, that three coming from the square root of nine. Okay, and I end up with 18 root two. Before you stop and just say, okay, great, I'm simplified, just keep in mind that, that sometimes you, you, can, you can still remove a perfect square. If you can't remove a perfect square, that's when you know you're done. Okay, another example here, this one's a little bit more involved, definitely involving the distributive property here. I'm gonna take this term, multiply it by this guy, and this is actually a, a foiling situation. You can think of these as two binomials, and remember we use foil, which is first outside, inside last, to expand and get rid of our brackets. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just multiply in this way. So I'm gonna take negative two root three, and I'm gonna multiply it by root three. I'm gonna take that term, multiply by the last term, and so on. Okay, so if you think about it, I've got negative two root three times root three. Well, I know root three times root three is root nine, right? I can use my, my useful property, which says I can just take those two numbers and multiply them and put them under a root sign. Okay, and then I can take negative two, multiply by negative five to get 10, and that root three kind of comes along for the ride, sort of as if it were an X or an, uh, or an unknown variable. I've got two times root three, that's just two root threes and then I've got two times negative five to get negative 10. Okay, so I gotta clean this up a little bit. Uh, a little bit of a mess. I don't really have any like radicals. I've got these guys, which are like. Uh, however, if you take a peek here, I've got the square root of nine. Nine ends up being a perfect square, a number that could be square rooted to get a nice number, such as three. But why not do that? Let's take the square root of nine, call that three. And you can see this is getting a little bit cleaner. So I've got negative two times three, that'll give me negative six. And then I'm just gonna collect my like terms. So I've got like radicals here and here. So I would have 12 root threes. I've got negative six minus 10. That gives me negative 16. Just to make sure that we're finished. Okay, if we take a peek at our the number under our square root sign, you gotta ask yourself, can I write this as a product of a perfect square and some other number? And your answer is gonna be no. Three is, you can't take three and write it as a product of a perfect square and another number, right? Not like 18. Where we, where we wrote it as nine times two. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video tutorial. It's a quick one on using algebra processes to simplify and work with radicals. This is something you're gonna use throughout your studies in math. You never know when these things pop up, so it's a good thing to keep in your utility belt.